Excellent. Thank you so much and your personal experience as well and your service to the peace process basically is, is invaluable. Um, struggling with the technology here, I'm just going to introduce another speaker to conclude the first part of the presentations. Sorry about this. Uh, I'm really quite good with computers, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, I just want to introduce you and I can swap the cable there. Uh, do you need a... Uh, sorry, do you need... Good. Good. So, um... Yeah, my computer won't let me do it. So anyway, computer says no. <laughs> um, Professor Escalona is, has been in Northern Ireland, I guess, since 1988. So um, in terms of, he, he predates, that predates UPF by a couple of decades anyway. So he remembers the bad old days, and he's been teaching and studying and lecturing and producing papers and uh, I'm very grateful that he's applied his his mind to the uh, one of the core aims of the UPF and uh, is that my wife up there? <laughs> Sorry darling. Yes, I'm very grateful that he's applied his uh, great mind to the issue of the tunnel between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. This was a proposal from a couple of years back, and uh, you know it's totally in line with the Peace Road idea, the, the external side of it, which was originally envisioned by our founders, Father Mother Moon, to be uh, unite the world to a Peace King bridge and tunnel. So Professor Escalona is going to give us uh, a little presentation about this, and um, I want to be the express a gratitude to him for last year he gave a, a nice talk in Armagh City Hotel and in Armagh we were able to see the institutions of the Good Friday Agreement today we're celebrating the anniversary but to bring countries together physically is one thing to bring them together artistically is another thing so this is the external goal of the, the peace road is is one thing which can help with the economy, it can help relations, and it's badly in need throughout the whole world, particularly between Russia and America, China, but also between Ireland and Britain. It would be invaluable, but is it a cost worth paying? You know, the government, the British government decided it wasn't. But maybe they could look at that again, because actually, if you look at how much money is spent on war, maybe it's worth investing and going that extra mile to, to bring in such initiative in place. So Professor Escalona is working in Ulster University for many years and uh, he's had some number of breakthroughs actually in, in, his, in his work in, to do with heart, the heart's, uh, um, it's, it's medicine or to do with treatment. So. Um, it's far beyond my pay grade or my understanding, so I'll let him maybe share his presentation and uh, I want to put you, ask you to put your hands together for Professor Omar Escalona. Yeah, I will be giving a perspective, global perspective, of the Peace Road. And basically, uh, the Peace Road is, it is a meet, meet and a, a forum for meeting and promoting the building of an international highway, it's called the Highway of Peace. And uh, actually it started with building, I'll go to the next, building the tunnel.
building a town here the market. So around here you can see um, yeah, this is Japan and this is Korea. So everything started there because of course also the founders. So I want to give the perspective, the internal, the inspiring perspective that moved all this uh, idea of creating a network of highway and important pieces like the bird bearing uh, bridge or tunnel and the uh, also the Japan Korean. That's how it started. Why is that? Because unfortunately, the last piece that is divided the world is in Korea. So Korea is the last resolution internally for, for many reasons. And also the the founder of this movement was born then was the uh, Japanese <coughs> He was born in 1920, the uh, late Reverend Samuel Moon. And uh, it, it was born in Pyongyang. He was born there. Now Pyongyang is in the middle of North Korea. And uh, it's pain, no? it's pain to him because he was born in a time when there was so much injustice by the Japanese colony, and then came the, the Korean War with the communist ideology, torturing. So it actually, he was a teenager. Uh, by then, when, when he's campaigning for the liberation of Korea, and he had to go to educate to Wasara University in Japan, and that was the first time he'd been six times in jail. So he took his commitment to deliver a sustainable, peaceful humankind. So he made this determination since he was uh, very young, since his teenage. So I want to read some of his writing when he was a teenage. So some words of the founder. He said, created beings other than humans are endowed with the innate nature to grow to maturity naturally and become obvious partners which bring God joy. Human beings, on the other hand, can become true and authentic object partners who bring joy to God only through their free will and free actions. They cannot become the object partners who inspire God with joy unless they understand His will and make effort to live accordingly. Hence, human beings are endowed with emotional sensitivity to the heart of God, intuition and reason to comprehend His will, and the requisite abilities to practice it. A person who relates to God in this manner will attain perfection of his individual character. So this is behind the founder. So this is the, he was a teenager in the mid-25, 25, around 25 years old. So this, these words are profound and uh, you can tell that this person uh, has committed to a great uh, challenge and he promised to heaven, because this is based on faith, to deliver a uh, sustainable, peaceful humankind is a picture. So many saints in history have taken this task, this task in their, in their children. So we Christian world we know is Christ was one of them. So I, I believe the standard of seriousness that we found in Reverend Samuel had since very young was clear and he was willing to go six times in jail, never intimidated by so he, he got tortured almost to death, stand up and continue. So I, I think it's a mirror. So anyhow, this is the, the heart behind the peace flow, and it's very serious. And he, he wants to solve the problem between North and South Korea. So how to start that? So that's why the peace road starts with the bridge between Japan and Korea, because doing that, then the only way to connect with the rest of the world is through North Korea. <laughs> and that way, North Korea can prosper. So it's a, it's a strategic way of bringing you in that corner of the world, which is important. I think it's central to history for humankind. So we need to solve that. Then 
there is, okay, once we reach the uh, Euro-Asia continent, that's uh, what the previous slide was about, that, that one year Euro-Asia continent, once we reach this, uh, this part, we can go into the Americas. So that unites two main blocks, and then of course they can be through the Indonesian islands and all these Philippines, can a series of bridges to join to Australia. So it's possible, a network of highway, of this highway. So the highway itself is this substantial infrastructure to enable an inspiring heart behind that. The inspiring heart is a sustainable freedom, a sustainable peaceful humanity. And to allow that, we need to have it, to have a, a freedom compliance or freedom policing. We have to develop that. So humanity is not a free, it's not as original intent. And that's why we have problems of conflict and, and disarmony, hegemony and, and disarray uh, dis from uh, in the ideological point of view, from a religious point of view, and also from uh, economic point of view, and political point of view. So there is this array. So um, I believe, yes, the, I heard the conversation from Colin and from Keith, uh, very inspiring. Yes, the, the, uh, the Good Friday Agreement is a milestone, is a model, I would say, because there was hatred originally. And this hatred was replaced by uh, embracing action between two brothers of North and South, or UK and Ireland. So this is the modern, modern, modern model for bringing this. We know that from the, the Bible teaching. So uh, you know, we have the internet. Uh, we have the internet. Yes, it's part of that infrastructure. But this is mainly informatics. So we have the internet developed, but also we have uh, engineering and technology of the 21st century who can finish the task in the most substantial component, which is building bridges and tunnels to connect all the continents. So we are in that time now. And this problem is unique because uh, the peace road or the peace highway has not been promoted before for the purpose of peace. You know, all are for purpose of politics, or purpose of uniting two countries, or purpose of economy, but no. Before that, let's let's go to what we want. We want a sustainable, free, abiding, or free and compliant world. Freedom assures peace. Therefore, can be sustainable. There can be peace, but if there is no true freedom. That peace will not last long. It's not sustainable. It's a temporary peace. That's why it's important. The words I include uh, the word uh, is uh, freedom compliant, uh, sustainable, peaceful, humankind. So those terms are key. So as I as I said, uh, this Korean time was from 1981, and the UPF, uh, the founders, not in that time, because the UPF started in 2005. I believe. So, but he found in 1981, uh, and his wife, Dr. Moon, Dr. Sanya Moon, suggested this construction of the highway for in an international uh, conference, international science conference, which is the International Conference for the Unity of Sciences. This is very early around that time, started even before 1972, the ICOS conference. But it's a meeting of science and technology, science experts. Science is, is this is the discipline of humankind who can handle creation, understand creation and handle and, and take care of it. So it's important to say that because there, a, there are the people, the, name, the people who can do this, this dream of making, of uniting the continents with tunnels and bridges, a reality. A, a, a reality. So, it started with the, with the uh, Japan Korean tunnel. <coughs> and it, it's, it's, but it's inspiring, inspiring because the founder he went to jail two times in Japan. You say he hates this country, but no, he loves this country. And he went to study there 
And then while he studied, he read the Bible. He didn't study, he got his, he, he got his, he, he's very clever, he got his degree in engineering, electronic engineering, electrical engineering. And at the same time, he was reading the Bible in that time. He was very young, 20 years old. And he wrote those pieces of inspirational work, principles that we, I've been reading for the last 43, 43 years, my wife wrote. So, very inspiring, we call the principle. And uh, uh, Reverend David Hanna will speak a little bit more, so I want to be short and take time from David. So, we'll have a coffee break, Yeah. you? Yeah. After me? Yeah. So, how long time I have? Same? Fine? How much time do you need? How long time I have left? Very much. Oh. No, I don't think. No, I mean, I mean. I, I, I can go fast. Okay, don't worry. Yeah. Ten minutes? Yeah. Fine, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is the Bering Strait. Uh, 2005, that's around the time the UPF was founded. So that platform allowed through the UPF inauguration to propose this bridge. Actually, this bridge is not complicated because the sea is not so deep. And uh, many people have, have proposed to build a chain of artificial islands to be, make it this closer. And they make a bridge, it's more physical. But they but also they're thinking on a tunnel. But it, it, it's more realistic, it's not really an impossible. I think it's a little bit probably would say three times more than the uh, Northern Ireland Great Britain Bridge, I would say. Probably one uh, one thousand But it's not impossible. There is political will. So we have to promote the political world, and that's why this role event, this event is called in this corner of the world. So now in this corner of the world, we're going to bring that uh, promotion because we also need a bridge on this part of the world. It's, it's a tunnel bridge, a substantial connection between the Great Britain Ireland, the island of Great Britain, and the island of Ireland, which includes Northern Ireland. It happens that the shortest route is in Northern Ireland, that's all. But it has been thought other routes from South Ireland, from Dublin, that's from the Ireland Republic, directly to Wales. But they are much expensive, therefore more difficult to convince from a public funding point of view. And there are from Scotland, and basically they are possible, and they have thought all of it, but we already have the the, the channel tunnel. Okay? That's important because that means that makes possible to go from Dublin to New York. <laughs> so if we just make a bridge on a tunnel between Northern Ireland and Great Britain, then we can have transportation and goods and whatever, tourists happen. We can go to France and if you want, you want to go to Berlin Strait. You can go to New York. It's a long trip, but many people will do it you know, on a bike <laughs> for, for fun. But in, it's a symbolic of unity of mankind. It's, it's when, when the founder proposes this, it's because, it's, I believe, it's in the heart of God. It's in the heart of heaven. You know, before this physical world was created, there was a heart and a concept, an idea, a project. And then the physical world came into existence. So the same thing behind the existence of humankind there are substantial important infrastructure that has to be around. One of them is the planet Earth. And from a communication point of view, then building bridges in this time, which when technology and science allows it, then they down in time. So it's an important. We have to reflect why Reverend Samuel and his wife had to have I think the reason is for good. And it's very deep. So it's for the for the well-being of humankind, that's what I want to say. And uh, then more closely, though, there are several projects here that did not work out. So this several project, the main one are these purple ones. Oops. So these are the most uh, kind of feasible projects of the Northern Ireland Great Britain Tunnel Project. There are two alternatives: bridge, is this touch line, and the tunnel. The tunnel, the tunnel has to be longer, you can see. You can see it goes on, on land because it's on the ground because you have to go through this field. And there is a particular problem. There is a 
deep seabed trench here, mm, deeper than 300 meters, and here is only 50 meters deep. So that's why if there is a torrent, you have to go around it, <laughs> and the bridge can go over that deep point. So, but the prices are different. Bridge costs 330 million pounds, and but the tunnel costs less, even though it's small. And it's not bad, because this tunnel can even reach Lisbon, and Lisbon reaches the motorway to Dublin. So, yes, you can think, well, oh, well, bang, you get. Yeah, you can be like, bang, is short, but there, there are different, there's no difference. There's no difference. So, uh, going out into Lisbon next to the motorway is more practical for transportation. You know? Goods and, and, and tourists. So this is the vision. The, this is the, the project that was scrapped by uh, Johnson uh, recently, two years and a half, two years ago. But that means scrapped. Uh, the the Japan Korea also has been scrapped about ten times <laughs> and then revived. So things will revive because there is an internal will of God for for the second. So it will it will continue. So maybe I will go quickly because I'm sure Reverend Hannah will speak a little bit. It's just why why we want peace? We, we need to a little bit understand what's the cost of of conflict in humankind. So if we I can't leave this message without addressing the cost of uh, conflict, which is embedded in the human spirit. So human spirit has disease. That's why we see conflict and hegemony. And that's why we need to work for peace. So I, I just want to say that we can understand the will of God if we understand, okay, we see in this cosmos, this world, there's a, an invisible incorporeal world which is like the mind, an individual, and a visible corporeal world in the universe and the body. Same thing, these attributes, the same thing is in the original causal being. I say original causal being because sometimes I understood people who are atheists, but actually atheists is also a belief. So anyhow, I say original causal being, some people call God, other people call Allah, so I, I say the original causal being, the, the creator, okay? And then, and then this, uh, this is the ideal world in where there is harmony be, between the invisible and the visible tangible world, same thing as in, in, in the Creator, in God. So, but there was a problem. This was not substantiated in the beginning of history of humankind. So we need to understand that problem. And so basically, uh, there, there is a, a loss of idea, uh, there is distortion and death, there is falsehood and blindness. So both we can see these aspects internally and externally. So we have misery externally, we have pollution, we have a lot of problems, and internally also in the belief of people, the ideologies, the religion. Uh, this is the visceral part that is also uh, mined with conflict. And then this result in conflict relationship. So we have to add this, this invisible cause. So I just want to go a little uh, quickly because you know, there is good and evil struggle in the world. So how did all got started? So I just want to give you an insight of the symbolic explanation in one of the Holy Scriptures, which is accepted by by Hebraism, Islam, Christianity, and many others. It's, it's very it's a generic tale. It says it's a story. It's about it talks about the tree of life and the tree of <coughs> and these two trees were presented by the parents of humankind that did not become substantiated. So human, humanity never had parents. So parents that connected with God because there was a problem. There was a problem of relationship between the first ancestors of humankind and the Creator. So it was supposed to develop that relationship before multiplying, but it, there was a problem there of understanding and of maturity of the first ancestor, and that's why this conflict war of Udani came to be. So there were two, three, one of the uh, three of the line, the three of the line. 
So to understand this, we have tried to get a little bit. I cannot go, this is not theoretical, but that tree of life symbolizes ideal manhood, the manhood that could relate to God freely and joy could establish an object partnership of joy and love. So this ideal manhood is a perfect. So the tree of life represents that. And this would be a God begotten song. So that's why the Bible says and the Christian is that this was God begotten song. And all this can be known, it comes from that. And, and, and that, that Jesus was the second Adam, and all this. So in, in short, I just want to tell you that this is ideal, but basically, what is this? It inherits a, a person that inherits God's heart and unites his, with his will in free and genuine. God loving faith. So needs freedom. Okay? To be a perfect man of character needs to be free. Freedom is is, is a it's an attribute from God that we have inherited, but we have not made it substantial this this blessing from God. So okay, once we have an understanding there was two trees and the other tree was the tree of life, uh, knowledge of good and evil. So what was it? It was some potentially not perfected stage, and thus represents Eve, in young Eve growing into her fullness. What was her fullness? She should have grown uh, to become God's begotten daughter, and uh, establish true motherhood, giving birth of children who can also embrace God's will and love, inherit God's, God's heart. So this is the, the sustainable, free, uh, compliant, uh, peaceful and good humankind. So we need a, a man and a woman ideal, the starting point. We lost that. So what's behind that? Yeah, why was the fruit? We know that there is a fruit, and now there was a command, a forbidden fruit. That's God's will. You know? So, and also, it must have had a unique gatekeeping role. That's why this tree was symbolizing it. So, but then his wife inherits this coming. Okay, so she's coming. And recently, I'm very glad because this, this is an online page in Oxford University. And they, they recognize that their professor, which is very Dane, Professor Dane Sarah Gilbert, she did a good contribution to science in the COVID uh, era. Developing vaccines. But this lady went to sell in the early 2022. So, and then when she comes back after the university, respect <coughs> this is a milestone for this culture. So, and, and she's time checking with Dr. Hakel Moon, and he's called the, the Sun Hak Business Prize. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hakel created this. Uh, five years ago. So I'm very delighted of this. I think I can jump uh, for personal page from this topic today. Final remarks, I'll just read them. Final remarks. The origin of our universe and of the life we know can only be possible as the result of a heart inspired conception, having a clear global purpose and sustainable, harmonious functionality for enabling peaceful and joyful living. True freedom is absolute. True freedom, see, true freedom, and is an attribute of our original cause of being, God, inherited by humankind who has a special role in whole creation. So in human has a special role and is connected their relationship, direct relationship, the creator. In a sustainable, peaceful humankind, all individuals are in love with true people. This is not true, then it's not true. Thank you very much.